One of the effects of living with electric information is that we live habitually in a state of information overload. There's always more than you can cope with. Now, the young have devised a strategy for dealing with this, quite apart from just inattention. Uh, <laughs> they have devised a much more potent strategy of myth, myth making. They instantly resort to pattern recognition. Somewhat. The, the big road systems and the uh, armies all over the place. But this, I, 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 I studied him very carefully. Where formerly there had been uniformity. So the, the logic of the computer is not uniformity, but in the long run flipped into diversity again. Mm -hmm. Which is a reversal, that's a flip part. Well, then this business that Dan Seedron refers to then is bringing the rock or music world into line with Western industrial practices. And so that you can reach the biggest possible market, you must have a uniform product. This is a mystique in itself. Why should the big market require this exact uniformity? Now, I don't, I've never seen any comment on that, but I think that the, in uniformity itself, there is a kind of magic, black magic, if you wish. So that people who are wear, using or wearing any particular thing have a certain power feeling if it's exactly the same as the one worn by everybody else. When you put on a car or a garment, a Brooks Brothers shirt that's exactly the way the one worn by everybody else, then you have a feeling of power. You put, on the corporate, you put on the corporate mouse with corporate power by using the exactly repeatable commodity. By using the exactly repeatable commodity. Uh, it began as, as fun and games. That is the dialogue, not the book. The dialogue of Plato. Yeah. Uh, it began, in fact, Plato, we're told, came to Athens with a mime, a mime troupe, M-I-M-E just to perform. By using the exactly repeatable commodity. By using the exactly repeatable commodity. Whereas if each commodity is different, then you don't have that feeling of corporate power. What about security? I don't know uh, what, uh, where that feeling comes in. Uh, uh, do you think that it does? It comes in here with, with wearing the same as everybody? Being like everybody is the most secure feeling. It's a way of hiding? Yeah. One of the big dramas of our time, and it's true, the private identity, the private individual, has been swept aside by this huge surge of the unconscious up into consciousness. The brain is a weird place to be, and now we're really in it, because we live in a world of devices and technology where we're constantly thinking about battery life and chargers and plugging in and syncing up, you know, with buffering and downloading, it's your whole life now. Uh, then I was working with anthropologists like Carpenter and so on at the same time, so we could compare the pre-literates, pre-literates. Montaigne's time, it was just beginning to form with print. But a, well, that was a time when, when entertainment was all on. Okay. If you can think of a sponsor or a, who ignores the audience, maybe the CBC in Canada. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Feels it's quite above the needs of the audience. And uh, so it creates a great many unpopular shows. <clears throat> I wouldn't say they're especially interesting. They're just unpopular. Oh, yeah.